Hi, I'm Princess Elmore, and welcome to Harlequin's Books and Cooks. In each episode, I get to teach a popular romance novelist a new recipe, which I personally love, while we talk about their careers and the books they love to write. And today, we have none other than New York Times and USA Today best-selling author, Brenda Jackson, who is also known for the Westmoreland series. And together, we're going to whip up my fantastic, delicious, white chicken chili. You don't want to miss this. Stick around. I am so excited to have best-selling author Brenda Jackson here with me. Hey, Brenda. Hey, Princess. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm so excited you're here with me today. I am excited to be here. As you know, we're going to be cooking my fabulous and delicious, but easy. I promise you, my white chicken chili is absolutely delicious. For those of you at home, there is a link below that you can click on for the full recipe and you can follow along right along with us. So, Brenda, are you ready? I am ready. All right, let's get started. Let's start prepping our vegetables. Okay. We're going to go ahead and start with our celery because I see you already have that ready. So I normally take my celery and I cut off the end of the celery. Of course, after it's been already cleaned and washed, we're going to take off the end of it. I normally take it by that little crease right there and I want to cut it right down that crease part. Okay. So we can take out this little top part right here. You mean this? So I'm glad because I'm not the only one that does that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to complete this celery by cutting off the top and the ends. And while we're doing that, Jackson, I got some questions for you, ma'am. Miss Brenda, tell me, do you cook a lot? Uh, lately, I've been, because of the pandemic, I have been cooking more so than eating out, of course. So I've been um, just doing my own thing. I love stir fry. So I've been doing a lot of stir fry meals. I love seafood. So I've been doing stir fry shrimp. I love, um, love a lot of southern dishes. What is your favorite meal to, to cook? Shrimp fried rice. Ooh. Shrimp but fried rice. instead of using regular rice, I've been using cauliflower rice because I'm trying to eat healthy. Yes, yes, and that's me. I do the same thing. I love cauliflower rice. Okay, so Ms. Brenda. Yes. You have been on this journey for a very long time. I believe it's like, I think, was it 1995 that you wrote your very first novel? That's correct. That's 25 years. Yes. That you've been on this journey, which is absolutely amazing. Tell me, what was your motivation to actually even start it right, period? I used to entertain my classmates when I was in junior high school with love stories because I love happy endings, the Cinderella, Snow White, all of them um, love stories. And I would entertain my classmates by making up my own. And when I graduated from high school, I wanted a business degree. So I went to college for business. But when I would go back to my class reunions, all my teachers who knew I used to write would ask me, did I ever write a book? And I say, no. I'm in corporate America. I love it. And they said, well, we think you're cheating yourself. You need to write something. So I decided to write a book just to show them that, yes, when the next time they ask me at a reunion, I've written a book. And I had copies of it to pass out, just like I did when I was in high school. And the teachers loved it. And they encouraged me to try to get something published. And that's why I did it. But what inspired me, the person that inspired me was my husband, because I wanted to write romance, because I had been married, I dated my childhood sweetheart, 
still wear my going steady ring that he gave me when I was four, when I was 15. So um, I just wanted to write romance stories versus any other kind of stories. And that he's the one that inspired me to write romance stories and still inspire me today. That is absolutely amazing. What a wonderful story. And I'm telling you, I love romance novels. Oh. And I, I don't know if I, I mentioned this to you, but my husband, when we, I think it was probably like, we, we've been married now for all, going on 25 years in February. But I used to read romance novels all the time. I would be so into them that he was like, are you still reading that book the whole time? I mean, I would go through a, a novel within probably like a week or less, the full wow. novel, because I was so into it. Okay, Ms. Brenda, so we chopped our onions, our bell peppers, and our celery. We put that to the side. Now we have our cilantro. And while, we, while you finish that, I have another question for you. Okay. So, I know you have written over a hundred novels. Yes, I have. And of course, we know you have been on the New York Times bestseller list a few times. USA Today bestseller list a few times. Yeah. Also, Harlequin Desire a few times. Yeah. Tell me, what is your personal favorite? What is your personal favorite novel that you love the best? Bane, a Westmoreland novel titled Bane. And it's about the uh, Westmoreland one that had to do the most growing up. When I first wrote uh, about the family, he was a teenager and he was mm -hmm. the one that got into so much trouble. So I wanted to show how he grew up, how he became a Navy SEAL and was disciplined, had to get disciplined, and how he uh, turn all his uh, roughness into protecting his country. So uh, the name is Bane because his name is Brisbane and it's short for Bane. And so the book is titled Bane. And I think I listen to Bane still um, at least once every other month <laughs> because it still inspired me. The story still inspired me because he and the young lady they met when they were young, like me and my husband met when we were young, and they all went through a lot. And he, they were separated for five years. And when they got back together, it was like they needed that growing up time. And so it was, it's a beautiful book. So if you could ever get it, it's called Bane, B-A-N-E. And it made the New York Times bestseller list. If, if it's your favorite, I know I'm going to enjoy it, so I can't Bane wait. is my favorite. The Westmoreland uh, um, family is my, one of my favorite families. I have two, the Westmorelands and the Madeiras. The Madeiras will always be near and dear to my heart because they were my very first family. But the Westmorelands are my bad boys, and I love writing about bad boy ranchers. <laughs> Got a question for you, Princess. Parsley and cilantro. Is it, do I have it cut up bigger? small enough or because I like to taste my ingredients so do you think this is too big no uh, -uh that's perfectly fine actually I was just about to tell you everything looks great and we can actually move on and get this chili started all right Miss Brenda we have everything prepped so it's time to get this white chicken chili cooking you ready I'm ready let's do it Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to add our olive oil into the pan. And it's gonna be about, I normally don't measure mine, but it's going to be approximately two tablespoons. All you would like to do is cover the bottom of your pan. So mine's is steaming up, it's coming up good. Miss Brenda, so we're gonna get this going. The first thing we wanna do is go ahead and add in our ground chicken, okay? So we're okay. gonna go ahead and get that chicken into our pot. And Ms. Brenda, with this chicken, I love cooking with ground chicken because it takes no time to cook. The thing about, you know, when you cook with ground, ground beef, ground turkey, you have to drain it. You do not have to drain this ground chicken because wow, everything is pure. Yeah, absolutely. You do not have to grab it because there's no grease, it's no fat in ground chicken. 
So I love it. So we have, you have your ground chicken in the pot? Yeah. Okay, and just wanna make sure that we are stirring it kind of periodically, making sure that the ground chicken is in bits and not in big chunks. And we're gonna go ahead and add in our vegetables. We're gonna actually cook the vegetables along with the meat. So we wanna go ahead and add those vegetables now before they brown so that the onions and especially the celery because the celery takes a little bit longer to cook. We're gonna go ahead and add those ingredients now. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our onions. So I'm adding my onion. Yes, ma'am. And then Ms. Brenda, after you've done that, we're gonna go ahead and add in our celery. Okay, adding the celery. Yeah. Ooh, this a lot. All right, Miss Brenda, and then we're gonna go ahead and add in our red and our yellow bell peppers. I add red and yellow bell pepper. Oh, and it smells so good, Miss Brenda. Oh, yes, it does. It. It's smelling so good already. Yeah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's in the herbs, I'm telling you, it's in the herbs and the vegetables. Okay, Ms. Brenda, what well, we're going to go ahead too, and we're going to go ahead and add in our cilantro now. So go ahead and get that. And me, instead of me pouring it over, I just like to sprinkle it into my pot. It looks so pretty. You say sprinkle it? Yes, just sprinkle it on the top. And we're going to mix it in, but I just love the way it looks on top of the red peppers and the green the yellow peppers and the, the green celery. It looks so good. Okay, Ms. Brenda, so now we have stirred in our vegetables within our ground chicken. And now we're gonna go ahead and add in our two 32 ounces of our chicken broth, okay? Okay. And you see, as you notice, the chicken has already started to brown. It's, it's like a light tan color. So it doesn't take long. So that is the reason why you do not have to wait to add in your chicken broth. We're gonna go ahead and do that now. Now, I do know that you do a lot of charity and community work, but I also learned that you have your own scholarship award. The Brenda Jackson Literary Scholarship Award. I have really two of them that I give out. I give out one through my sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. Okay. And, yes, and then the second one I give out to the Continental Women's Society. And they're going to high school seniors. They're not, they don't have to have um, going to college, you know, to be writers, because I didn't take any writing classes. So, you know, to be a writer, you don't have to, you know, go to college to be a writer. But they have um, basically did well academically in their high school, and they are nominated by their principal and guidance counselor. And they have to stay in college all, all four years and, um, you know, get a degree in some type of Bachelor of Art, Bachelor of Science, and the school gets the money, every, well, the student gets the money every year. Oh, okay. So let's check back. Yeah. Without chili, I'm boiling. boiling too. I am boiling too. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and add in our spices. We're going to add in our lime, our green chilies and all of that so we can get this thing going. Go ahead and open up your pack of uh, chili mix. We're going to go ahead and put in the chili mix first. Okay. Oh, it smells so good. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, and once you pull that in, we're just going to give it a stir. Okay, so Miss Brenda, now what we're going to do, we're going to add in our fresh lime juice. And mine's is boiling pretty good. How yours doing over there? It's doing pretty good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. The more it boils, the quicker that that celery gets done because I can see now our onions and our um, bell peppers are pretty much tender. Okay, so what we're going to do is just go ahead and take our knife, and we're just going to cut the lime in half. Ooh, mine's is juicy. So all we want to do is just take one half and just squeeze it into our chili. All right, so I got mine's out my first half. We want to do the same thing with the other half of your lime. And if you want to, you can go ahead and just toss 
your line unless you want to do something else with it. I do not put the line inside of my chili batter, because, my chili mixture, because it has a bitter taste. So we don't want a bitter taste. We just want a splash of lime taste in this chili. So we don't want to put the lime in there, but we want to get that juice going. Okay, Miss Brenda. And what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and add in our beans. Are you ready? Okay. So we're going to go ahead and just pull the entire cans into our chili right now. Oh, it smells so good. It does. It does. And we have one more ingredient to put in there, Miss Brenda. We're going to go ahead and add in our green chili. So we're going to go ahead and pour in that whole entire little small can of our green chili. Okay. Let's go ahead and add in our spices now. You ready? Yes. Let's go ahead and add in our garlic powder. We just want to sprinkle some. Now, I never measure my, se my seasoning. Uh-huh. So, I, but I normally just sprinkle it around the top of it. It's going to be to your tasting. So when we do a little simple taste test, we're going to make sure you have enough seasoning in yours. Okay. But I can tell you, I normally put about probably like one to two teaspoons of each seasoning, my garlic salt, garlic powder, and it smells good. If you can smell it now after putting it in the garlic powder and garlic salt, yeah. it's perfect. So now we're going to add in our chili powder. And then lastly, we're going to add in our black pepper. All right. And now we just want to give our chili a stir. And we're just going to let it simmer for a few more minutes. And we'll be actually done with this chili for today. I just recently started reading The Wife He Needs. Please yeah. tell us about this latest novel, please. Okay, uh, my readers have been waiting on this book for a long time. The outlaws are the cousins to the Westmoreland. So Garf is the oldest of the outlaws. Right. And he is was such a wonderful hero to write about. He needed someone in his life. And I love that story. And I'm glad that you are enjoying reading it. Okay, I got another question, but first, I know mine's is boiling, is yours boiling? We can probably turn it down a little bit. We just want to turn our eye down to a low heat okay. because this is almost done. We, like I said, we're just getting it simmering now and we are almost done. So we're just going to give it a stir, make sure it's not sticking or anything to the bottom, which it is not. Yeah. How yours is doing over there? Mine is doing wonderful. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is how, Very good. look at you, you already tasting it. Look. So we are almost done with this and we're going to go ahead and taste our chili. But before we do, I only have one more question okay. again about the wife he needs. I know that is your latest novel. There are five brothers and one sister. So oh. I'm taking them one at a time. Um, I'm saving the second brother. The next oldest is Jessa or Jess, but I just wrote a book for my Madeira's family that deals with politics because uh, Jess is a senator. So I didn't want to write any more books dealing with Washington right now. So I skipped him and I went to Cash. Cash book comes out in April and it's the marriage he demands. And then six months later or seven months later, Sloan outlaw book comes out and it's what he wants for Christmas. So then I have Maverick, which is the youngest brother book to write. And I'll then I'll go back to the second oldest brother, Jess. And then I'll say the only sister for last. What can we expect from the wife he needs? Because like I said, I'm, I'm at the, the middle. So I know you didn't mention anything else about uh, Garth. So is it going to be okay? No, I don't want you to. Garth has now. a happy ending. <laughs> it does. So, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's all I need to know. Anything way, Garth has a happy ending. And one thing I like is that I bring the family back together. Not only the outlaws. I always have an event that not only the outlaws come together, but the Westmorelands come together because. It's a part of the Westmoreland series. They're the Westmoreland cousins. 
newfound cousins. So they are doing things together in the book. All right, Brenda, we are ready to plate this delicious white chicken chili. You ready? I'm ready. All right, so we just got a bowl here and put a little meat in my bowl, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so you see the thickness I have in there now, right? So now I take my ladle, put it down in my liquid, then put some liquid in it. So it can be kind of even with my meat and my vegetables and everything. So it's not too liquidy. And then we just go ahead and pour a little juice into right. that too. So you have an even amount of the juice along with the meat, the veggies, the beans, everything. Don't that look good? Yeah. So before we dig into it, remember we have our parsley. You got your parsley over there? Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do is just sprinkle a little bit of our parsley on top of our chili. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, just a little bit more. And it's to your liking. If you only want a little bit on there, hey, that's fine. Just put as much parsley as you want on there. And also, if you have any of your cilantro, I know we put all of ours into the chili, but you can also garnish it with a little cilantro instead of the parsley, or you can do both. It's good no matter what. All right, let's taste it. What we got? Mmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Wonderful. This is some good chili. You hear me? Very good. So what you think? What you think, Miss Brenda? I think it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And just what I need. This time of year, plus you're trying to get away from fatty foods, this is it. Absolutely, absolutely. I definitely agree. It's cold outside. We can't go too many places during the pandemic right now. So this is absolutely perfect. It's a quick dish for your yeah. family. And like I said, you can add some other things to garnish on it. And also try it with the buttermilk cornbread. Next time you come back, we got to do some cornbread because I'm telling you, it's so good with the chili and it's healthy, it's light. And you can tell by even just the first couple of spoonfuls that it's really healthy to taste. And it's like, it's yeah, it's not fattening at all. I love it, absolutely love it. Tell me, what can we expect that's coming up for you in the next year? I know you mentioned some things. Um, I wanna know about your films and more novels. What can we expect coming up for you? What's new? Well, we can expect book two in the Grangers, Advanced Promise, and book three, A Lover's Vow. And I'm looking to take the Catalina Cole series to film as well. And in addition to that, I have three new Catalina Cole books that I'll be starting on and more outlaws. So I will be writing a lot and I will be doing a lot of filming. I can't wait. I cannot wait. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And I'm linked to your Twitter. I'm linked to all of your social media so I know what exactly what's going on. You just reach out to me and say, hey, Princess, is it? This is what I got going for you. Tell me. I'm going to pick it up. <laughs> Trust me. I'm going to pick up every novel and I'm going to be sitting either, either in the movie theater or in front of the TV to check out your films. Absolutely amazing. I'm so excited of everything that you have coming up and I cannot wait, Ms. Brenda. Thank you, thank you. I wanna just thank our best-selling author, Brenda Jackson, for joining us today and doing an amazing job with the white chicken chili. You did great. And you guys, make sure you check out her latest novel, The Wife He Needs. It's fabulous and it's available everywhere. And also for recipes and more, make sure you click the link below and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, bye.